Hello, hello, Bugatube, it's Louise, the Big Hair Bookworm. Lovely to see you, hope you're well. Hope you're having a good day, wherever it is you are, and whatever it is you're doing. Welcome to Weekend Reads. Insert song that I don't have. <laughs> oh, Mike, do you know, I'm having issues with my hair today, and I can't do anything about it, because I'm going swimming later, so I'm going to wash it later. So I don't want to wash it already, or put anything on it, but it's all gone a bit funny. So, excuse the funny hair today. How are you? Are you having a good day, wherever it is you are? Uh, it is Saturday the 31st of October. So blessed be everyone that celebrates Halloween or All Hallows Eve. Uh, I myself uh, celebrate Halloween in, in, in the terms of um, having fun with kind of spookiness because I do like my spook which if you follow the Spooky Tales podcast which I do with a husband you know I do like all spooky things um but I actually celebrate and uh this day actually this evening is the beginning of Sarwain so for me uh, as a practicing pagan this is a um festival or, no, not really a festival. It's not really a solstice. Well, it's a point where, in the pagan wheel, we would celebrate Sarwain. And Sarwain is the Celtic slash pagan festival, which is now commonly known as All Hallows' Eve or Halloween. And is the first it's kind of to acknowledge the end of the spring summer autumn cycle so the kind of summer into autumn cycle and it's the start of winter so this would be the start of winter for us and it begins tonight at sunset and it is the point in the year where we acknowledge um death and that everything comes to a close that nothing stays the, st the same and everything comes to a close and everything passes, so everything dies. So everything living will eventually die and that includes us and it includes all of those that we love. So it includes um, our pets and it, our family and the natural world that is around us and so it is the acknowledgement of death and that... Uh, the living and the dying share the same space that it is just a veil that separates us this is part of the pagan kind of belief system and it is the time of the year where death is more present than anything so winter uh, logistically mean is a time of the year where death is more present we can see it around us we can see the decay we can see the the land uh bits of the land dying before the regeneration of spring so that's and it's the dormancy and it's about closure and it's about acknowledging that death and it's also when you know humans traditionally die more in winter than they do at any other time of the year and it's when we are closest to death and it is when we are it is that cycle um and if you believe in the pagan religion then then if you believe in the pagan thoughts and you practice as i do then this evening is the beginning of that and it is the, the point where it's marked and of course as humans do they choose to celebrate it in different ways and it gets altered and changed as culture changes and so halloween has morphed into kind of all spooky stuff and and we focus on things that scare us um to make death feel less scary we focus on the the spooky and the, everything like that to kind of avert our eyes from the realness of death and it and it is basically that so that's what halloween is to me so it's all the spook and all the fun but sarwain has a bit as a deeper meaning for me and tonight which is also a full moon how amazing is that um tonight we acknowledge 
that there is just the veil between us and that we share the same space with all that has passed. And so you can give offerings. To, so one of the things that I do as somebody is I would give offerings to uh, those that have parted. So I might put out favourite food or I might light a candle in remembrance and other rituals that you choose to do, which is basically just doing the same thing with meaning it's doing an activity with meaning that's what a ritual is to me doing an activity with meaning so making a cup of tea for somebody with love and thought could be a ritual for me um she says having a slurp of tea so yes yeah, so that's what today is so i have my halloween dress on with lots of spooky kind of for fun stuff all this week i've been wearing when i've going to work because I can't travel. I'm a, for those that are new, I'm a uh, pre-reg pharmacy technician. I'm in my second year and I work for the NHS, which means I <laughs> go to work. Um, and uh, I wear a uniform at work, but we, we cannot travel in our uniform. We have to change at work and, and coming home. So I've been wearing spook t-shirts <laughs> all week to kind of celebrate the spook, the season of spook. We've released two podcasts this week, but my husband's actually got them up and they're there and they're there for listen. There's one traditional episode where he tells me a spooky tale and another one where it's a massive compilation and it's a lot longer and it's a lot of other spooky paranormal uh, podcasts have all got together and, and that's a longer one. If you're interested in it, I shall leave the details below. It's the Spooky Tales podcast. Um, and I've been... Uh, Yes, and we've been kind of we've started watching The Haunting of Bly Manor, which is on Netflix. We haven't got very far into it because uh, we're rubbish at um, watching a series. Do you know we work better when it's just released once a week? We find that easier than actually something which is a box set because. I can't watch that many episodes of anything in one go and then I get kind of wearied out about it and the husband is the same he's much better on his own he'll just watch something for a day and that's it we're not good at keeping going if it's just on once a week we can kind of do that but it's it's weird everybody else can binge box sets but we're terrible at, at doing it the amount of things we've started and not got very far into it I can't even tell you um, and yet everybody else is like oh I've watched this and I've watched that and I've watched this and I'm like how, how have you watched all of this friends um, yeah so we started watching that which we must carry on, we must watch it because it's, it's good, is it good? I presume it's good anyway um, yeah. so what else have we been doing? working this week, the husband's been off so I live, if you're new here hello, you're a returning viewer Welcome back, cheers. If you're new here, my name's Louise, I'm the big head bookworm. I live with a husband and my 12 year old son, who's doing a very good job of being quiet at the moment because I've had to go and ask him, would he be just a little bit quiet because he's playing computer games with his mates on the phone. So he's on a WhatsApp call group and then he's playing and talking, but he gets really excited and he bangs his feet on the floor. And I'm like, is there any chance we can just keep it down? He's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so he's doing a good job of being quiet at the moment. They've had, they've been on half term. So the husband took the half term off so that him and Benedict could go and do things and they have, and that's been really lovely. Um, so that's been a good week for them. Good work week for me. How have you been? Have you had a good week? What's the weather been like with you? It has been proper, proper autumn. Not glorious crisp days, proper, proper wet, grey autumn. We've got a bit of a storm passing us and I think we're getting kind of a side swipe, kind of doing that to us at the moment. So earlier um, I was going to sit and record but the light was so bad, it went really dark. Um, and it's, look, it's looking a little bit better, but I think it's just going to keep on passing through. We had proper rain, proper stair, stair rods, as they say. Um, so there's no laundry on anybody's mind this morning. Well, it may be on their mind, but it's certainly not on their lines because it is a wet one. It's been wet all week, actually. I don't think anybody's had, had any luck. If you put anything on the lines, we've certainly not. Um, it's radiators only. And in fact, I've got something soaking in... 
the sink which I need to take out so you're gonna to have to bear with all right I'll do it after will it be all right it'll be all right yeah it'll be all right okay I was gonna go and get, quickly go and get it out no I'll be fine it's my husband's socks spousal socks which I've knitted because I do knit if you're new here I knit as well so oh I'm a bit rambly this morning I do apologize <laughs> it's gonna be a rambly one no it won't I'll keep it keep it a bit fresher so yes here we are let's talk about the books let's talk about the books baby let's talk about you and me um so I showed you lots of books last week which I had bought recently and some I'd read, some I hadn't read, but I didn't tell you then. And I hoped you would have a little guess. And hopefully when you were watching, you thought, oh, I bet she's read that one or she hasn't read that one. There was also some ones I've DNF'd, which is did not finish, do not finish, which means I'm going to not read. I've given it a go and thought, no, that's not for me. There were a couple of ones that I was in the, um, in the middle of or had started. And there was one I had my eye on to start. So. I have finished a book this week and I am nearly halfway through another book which I saw and bought and I'm halfway through and I'm loving it. So I shall show you that at the end. So let's go quickly go through the books that I showed you last week and tell you exactly where I am with it. So Three Women by Elisa Taddo is a non-fiction book I discovered last week. I haven't read it, I have done nothing with it and it's still on my list to read. So put that there. Rules of for Vanishing by Kate Alice Marshall. This is a YA spooky book um, and it's do you want to play the game and it's all spooky. This is my DNF. I started it and I just wasn't interested in the teenagers. They're great. I'm sure it's great. I've got like 90 it's all different kinds of um it's supposedly mixed media so it's some kind of interviews and some kind of stories and some kind of recollections from all different points of view and i found it irritating so that was rules for vanishing by kate alice uh, marshall that is going to be passed on to somebody else i don't know who but they will get it Oh, I've got a hair with this uh, this is moon called by patricia briggs this is a paranormal fantasy set in our world so it's more urban fantasy i suppose rather than paranormal fantasy although it's i've got shapeshifters and werewolves and vampires i had started this book and i finished it this week um for some reason somebody said a comment that i hope it's this one because it's about mercy thompson she is our heroine and uh somebody said i really hope it's this one because that's i really hope that's you've read and enjoyed it because i love mercy thompson's books and i thought you know i'd started it i'd started it and got about 40 40 pages in um and I hadn't, it hadn't absolutely clicked with me, but I thought, oh, with their comment, I thought, I'll give it another go. And so I did, and I read it, and I really, really enjoyed it. So I can recommend this as the beginning of a series, Moon Called by Patricia Briggs. It's an urban fantasy. Um, yes, I did really enjoy it. I really enjoyed it. I was reading it every day at lunchtime, and... And I wanted to pick it up because I wanted to know what happened. In particular, between people. Because it's there is a hint, hint of a romance. And I wanted to see where that went, as well as with the story. Because there's kind of stuff. And I know which way I want it to go. I'm not going to tell you, but I know which way I want it to go. But yes, so yes, yay for everybody that said about this. And it was more than one person said about, about Mercy Thompson. Um, you were right, it's great. And I will be, I have ordered, I, uh, I could only find, to begin with, I could only find a mass market paperback, which of course are the smaller A format. This is a B format paperback, trade paperback. No, not trade paperback, B format paperback, which is the slightly larger paperbacks. And I wanted the book in the... Um, I wanted to carry on in the series. I wanted to carry on with the in the B formats, but I have found it at Book Depository, so I'm hoping that comes in the next week or so, and I can read 
you know carry on with the series i want to carry on with it quickly because otherwise i will lose um my flow and i don't want to lose flow hidden valley road inside the mind of an american family by robert colker um so this is about this amazing family who six of the children um have have or had schizophrenia it was an oprah winfrey's book club pick which i saw her one of her book club like half an hour things about and thought oh that sounds really interesting i will get this and i read it i read it over the summer um i found this fascinating i didn't uh oh like i say so it's a heart-rending story of a mid-century american family with 12 children six of them diagnosed with schizophrenia that became science's greatest hope great hope in the quest to understand the disease and it has kind of two elements to the book so there's one which is about how which is the kind of understanding of schizophrenia across the ages and how the the treatment of it has developed or not as the case may be and that it's very pharmaceutical driven now as well as there is a behavioral side and it's whether or not it is curable it's almost understanding what is schizophrenia i still even at the end of the book i didn't feel that we've grasped what schizophrenia is um and the impact of it um I think Robert Colker did a brilliant job of bringing this family to life and bringing all the issues to life. Um, it was fascinating. I watched the the Oprah Winfrey half an hour, then I read the book and then I re-watched it. It was interesting having watching it again, having I'd formed an opinion, read the book, and then watching it again, watching those people. It was fascinating to see them again. The two, there are two daughters who were were eleven and were the kind of eleventh child and the twelfth child, and they had a different experience of the family. And it was a rough, a rough book in the fact it it deals with abuse and in all forms and is it's a hard book to read because it is a family and you're reading the family secrets but I can't put my finger what on what I found not satisfactory maybe, maybe it just was because maybe it was because there were elements of it that just weren't addressed like there was this kind of physicality of the family um they would have fights and even like and then it's never really addressed as a, the violence in the family it's almost like it's never really truly acknowledged like the mother and the father never went yeah we let you down we we i don't know i felt that it wasn't resolved it wasn't resolved and maybe that's that's because life isn't about things getting resolved things aren't resolved um and the the disease doesn't resolve itself, you know. It only resolves when somebody dies, unfortunately. And 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 so it was fascinating in that it it swept me into their world, and it was an uncomfortable place to be. But I'm really glad I did. I don't know whether I'd read it again. I don't know whether I'd read it again. I would recommend it if you're interested in that kind of family dynamic. And it also had a strong science element, which I found fascinating because I do like science books. So I really did enjoy I did enjoy it, but it was an uncomfortable experience, which is interesting because Lost Girls, his previous book, was also very good, but an uncomfortable experience. Um, so perhaps it's worth knowing that when you go in, that he, he is willing to tackle uncomfortable topics. And we should be really glad that people are. So, yeah. Yeah, interesting. An interesting book. An interesting book. So I, I was really glad I read it. Um, and I don't see an awful lot of people talking about it. So Hidden Valley Road. Oh, well, I'm in Oprah. Yeah, saw her talking about it. But then it seems to have kind of... It kind of went... Bloop, blah, 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 blah. And I would like more people to read it and talk about it and think about it. And, and tell me if you've read it. That'd be great. The Thursday Murder Club by Richard Osman. I have read this. I finished it not last week but the week before. So it was the 
one of the my, one of my more recent reads. I wanted to read it straight away when it came in with as it's a gorgeous hardback. It is a gorgeous hardback. Look at that lovely. Um, and I really enjoyed it. I really, really, really enjoyed it. He has a very wry sense of humour and it comes through. I wouldn't say it's laugh out loud hilarious, but there's some wit and the characters are just gorgeous. I have to say the characters are just gorgeous. I really liked um, them. I really liked how he, you know, them. I really did. It was just really good. I, I completely, I highly, highly, highly recommend it, the Thursday Murder Club. I don't know what it's like as an audiobook if you're into audiobooks. I don't know who reads it. It'd be fascinating if he reads it. Um, I wonder if he does. I don't know. Um, but yeah, I really enjoyed it. And so much so that um, when the husband went down to see um, his parents this week, he put it on the uh, mother-in-law's kin Kindle on my recommendation because I think she's going to love it as well. It is cosy crime, um, but it has some wit to it and some surprises. And I just, it was really lovely. I highly recommend it. So yeah, good book. A good book. Uh, Into the Drowning Deep by Myra Grant, who is Shauna McGuire. Yes, she is. Um, Into the Drowning Deep. Did I say Into the Drowning Deep? I hope I did. Yes. So this is kind of a creature horror book about mermaids. I read it in the summer when I was on a holiday. I thoroughly enjoyed it. I really did. I wouldn't say it's the finest of its its type, but uh, and the horror... Oh, yes, it didn't really kind of scare me or spook me and maybe that's because of creature horror I'm not affected by that way although I was affected by James Herbert in that way I wasn't affected by mermaids um, but I did really enjoy it I did, it, was, it was well written um, I can't remember much more about it apart from the fact I enjoyed it I read it really quickly satisfying um, there's a good female-female relationship explored in it I quite like that as well. So it's not. Yeah, I wouldn't say it was. I wouldn't say it was one of the mill. I enjoyed it. I think she did well. I, I, I would recommend if you're in the mood for a horror that isn't that horror horror, then I would think that's a good one. A good one to have a go with. Red Sister by Mark Lawrence. Not that Mark Lawrence. This Mark Lawrence. Uh, so this is the first of a trilogy. I have since remembered. Um, I read this in the summer. This is one that I read and I enjoyed it, despite the fact it has an eight-year-old as the main protagonist. Um, it is set in a kind of, it's a fantasy where these are, at the Covenant of Sweet Mercy, girls are raised to be killers. Very violent in the fact of the training sessions. If you liked what's it called that's not helpful um i can't remember this is right so god's grave was the second one what was the first one called you're all going to be saying it give me a sec let me just look up on my phone i've got it downstairs i've read the first two i haven't read the second two let's have a look if we put god's grave in God's grave. Jay Christoph, thank you. The Nevernight Chronicle. If you enjoyed the Nevernight Chronicles by Jay Christoph, starts with Nevernight, then it is God's Grave, which is book two, and then Dark Dawn is book three. When's that coming out? It's paperback. Let's have a look. Is that out already? Oh, I didn't know that's actually out. Yeah, I should get need to get put that on my wish list for Christmas. Um, if you enjoyed those, I think you'll like Red Sister. In fact, yes, I would say I would say that you would enjoy Red Sister. A lot of oomph about it, and I did enjoy it. Um, it's not without flaws, and but I think that's partly because I don't like. I wish that it'd been. I wish they hadn't been younger. I wish they had been older and I'm that's why I'm looking forward to reading the rest of the series because it's as they get older so it'll be more kind of teenager and then grown up is what I'm hoping cross fingers um but I did really enjoy it it's a good fantasy book 
and it has that kind of element of 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 Nevernight of being a kind of a school for killers and all the other arts that they do and uh, yeah really enjoyed it did really enjoy it so Red Sister that was a good a good fantasy find for me the Killer Across the Table by John E. Douglas and Mark Olshaker. I read this. I did read this. I read it as soon as I got it a couple of weeks ago. I really enjoyed it. It's a true crime. It's centres on four serial killers that John E. Douglas, who was the who wrote Mindhunter, um, which as I've also got, which I also got, which is a Netflix series. Um, he wrote so it's about four serial killers and it's about the interviews that he did with them and what he learned from the interviews and he recaps on their crime and then tells you about their interviews that he did with them in prison and um the kind of insights into the serial killers and their behaviors from that i really enjoyed it um it's quite a brutal read as many of these are um, not for the faint-hearted, but I did really enjoy it. I find him very interesting, John E. Douglas. So this is the book that I was about to start, Mindhunter, um, which I didn't realise came out about 20 years ago, has a brand new introduction, um, giving updated information about some of the serial killers that are actually mentioned about it, this. And I didn't realise until I started reading it, I obviously did read it about 20 years ago because it was very familiar. So I'm, I'm only, I'm 65 pages in at the moment. I'm not sure I'm gonna carry on with it at the time, at the moment, just because I have read it before. And there is that element of, yep, yeah, I remember this. Yep, yeah, I remember that. And at the moment, I'm not in that mood. I want to read other stuff. So I did really enjoy, I remember enjoying it before and rereading it. Re, I read the introduction, I thought, Is it did is this something I read before? And then I started reading it, and it's kind of from the distant past. I thought, oh yes, I did. I read. I think I think I've actually read this before, many moons ago, probably when I was working in the bookshop. So I might not have had my own copy or something. But anyway, I definitely have read this before. Um, so actually, this is a, a previous read, but from many 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 years ago. And I will read it again, and I will catch up with it. But I'm just not going to read it again at the moment but I'm, I'm going to keep it because it was good and I, and I will read it at some other point. Um, Melmoth by Sarah Perry which is a literary fiction not too long I haven't read it um, but I am going to read it soon because it's beautiful and I do like Sarah Perry's work. King of Scars by Lee Bardugo this is a new start in the Grisha universe which is YA slash adult fantasy. Um, I haven't read it. Looking forward to it. I will be reading that again soon. I will be dipping into that. Hollow Pox by uh, Jessica Townsend, which is a Nevermore book. This is the third in the Nevermore um, series. It's The Hunt for Morrigan Crow. Let me again show you the gorgeousness of the naked hardback. Oh, it's just so beautiful. This is the book. Uh, this is a book I am currently reading. I am uh, that far through it. I would have finished it by now because I love Hollow Pox. I love the series so much. Other people were saying, yes, I love it too in the comments. And yes, I understood my feelings for it. I'm reading it with Benedict and therefore I am not allowed to read ahead. So the other two books in the series, I've read them and then read them with Benedict. But with this one, because he's now of an age where he knows that, he's like, you are not allowed to read ahead. You have to read it with me. So we take it each turn each, take it in turns each night. So one night I read him and then the next night he reads to me. Um, and we both always want it to go longer, but there's only so long you can actually read somebody. And so tonight it is Benedict's turn to read to me. So as I say, we're we're only on page eighty-five, um, and so it's going to take us probably a month to read it. But oh, it's so good! And I'm is this is probably one of the first books that I've really wanted to read, and I can't read because I'm reading it with Benedict, and so I'm experiencing it with him, which is just heavenly. So I'm a very lucky woman. So yeah, so Hollow it's so good, so good. 
Um, this is initiated by Amanda Yates Garcia, Memoir of a Witch. I haven't read this. I've read the first 20 pages or so and thought, yep, I do like the sound of this. This is uh, Amanda Yates Garcia's mother initiated her into the goddess worship and practice of witchcraft when she was 13 years old. And it's about being a modern witch and all of that. And I shall give that a go. I just haven't read it at the moment. Probably now will be a good time to read it. Or would it not? But I will not at the moment. So what... I've got two books here. This was a book I forgot to show you that I had bought. It's called All the Rage by Cara Hunter. Um, I think I read the first 10 pages of this when I was on holiday. I bought it just before we went on holiday as a kind of a thriller if I was in the mood for a thriller. I haven't read it. It was part... That's another one of those sticker, false stickers. Grr. Um... Yeah, it's a D.I. Adam Foley thriller, so it's obviously not the first that she's written. No, she's written quite a few, but it's a kind of a standard thrillery thing. The first girl came back, the nerds might not be so lucky, so yeah. Anyway, it's a thriller. I shall read it at some point. And now for the book, how long have I been going on? Oh, I've still managed to go on too long. Oh, well, never mind. Um, This is a book that I did know about and then completely forgot about and then somebody mentioned it and I thought oh, and so I ordered it then and there and then it came the next day and I read my other book and I was so pleased and I started it two days ago and I'm that far through it I've already read all of that oh, you ready Midnight Sun by Stephanie Meyer so, Twilight. Twilight. I don't believe in feeling guilty about find, where you find your pleasure. And I loved the Twilight books when they came out. I wasn't their target audience. I was about 20 years too old for their target audience. But I still loved it. And I can completely understand why all the teenage girls were as obsessed with it. And good for them that's what I say and good for everybody else that enjoys it it isn't written as a literary thriller or a literary piece of art it is escapist fiction and it's great I know it's not perfect but it's great I thoroughly enjoyed it so I really enjoyed the first uh four twilight books um, I have my favourites in there. I actually really like the second one. A lot of people don't, but I really like the second one. Um, and the fourth one did its best. And some bits which were a bit irritating in it, but the fourth one did its best. I haven't read the novella. The short... What does it say? The Short Second Life of Brie Tanner. I haven't read that. Um, I have to see whether I can find a cheap copy of that to kind of read it. And then this is Midnight Sun by Stephanie Mayer. I presume you know what the Twilight books, books are. You do. It's Bella and Edward. Edward's a vampire. Oops, well given it away. Um, and uh, this is the first book... Twilight written from Edward's perspective so that isn't a new concept in any way shape or form I was actually after I bought it I had that little moment of worry because the Fifty Shades of Grey series by E.L. James E.L. James have I got it right oh I can't remember now um she wrote Grey didn't she which was the first Fifty Shades book um from Christian Grey's perspective, which I never read. I the, I've, the Fifty Shades series, again, if you loved it, then good for you, and you enjoy yourself. You enjoy yourself. You do you. That's what I say. Um, I, I read it, I really didn't want to read it, but everybody was reading it, and about four of my friends went, you must read it. Um, so I read it, and it was uh, fine, and then I read the second one just out of kind of morbid curiosity curiosity I couldn't bring myself to read the third one I really can't I remember being on a plane on the way home from our holiday when it was all the rage and there was somebody sat reading the third book and she was like 
And I, I, I'm coming back to Leo, I went, any good? And she went, I'm just reading to finish it. And I always remember her expression, which was just like, just reading to finish it. And I thought, yeah, I'm just not going to bother. And I never got round to reading the third one. And that's fine in my life, even though I am a finisher. Oh, that's fine. Um, so there was an element, just before I started it, I thought, oh, is this going to be like Grey, which got universally panned? Um, but I have, can report, I am loving it. I am, considering I got this Wednesday and I started it, I started Thursday. Or did I start it yesterday? No, I must have started it. I cannot have read all of this in one day. I can't remember. It's either one day or two days. I'm on page 328. <laughs> it is very easy because, A, you know the story because you've read the first book. Um, and you know the characters because they're part of the same series. Um, but I'm really enjoying it. I am really, really enjoying it. And, uh, yeah, it's really nice to be back in the Twilight world. Um, and just what can I say? I'm really enjoying it. It's really good escapism at the moment. And, uh, yeah, I'm really liking it. So I'm like, happy girl. Happy girl with her book. Let me know if you've read it. Um, or what you think of the Twilights. There was part of me that thought, it's going to be weird talking about it because it, the, people get really judged for, for liking Twilight. But I'm like, ah, oh, if you like it, you like it. And I like it a lot. So there we go. That's my, my book that I'm currently reading. I reckon another two days and I'll be done with this. So I'll be able to tell you next week how I'm doing and yeah, and what the state of play is. Hopefully the storm, Storm Aiden, will have passed us and we might have some, apparently it's going to crisp up a little bit. It might be cold, but it might be dry, which would be nice. We'll get better light because this light is not good. So yeah, so thank you very much. If you got to this point of the video, well done you, my word, aren't you doing well? Um, sorry it's so long. I went on a bit, didn't I? But never mind, that's life. I do chat. Do chat, I do. Well, this has been lovely, Booktube. I send lots of love to you and blessings to you and your family at this time. Um, hope you're well. Hope you're keeping well and keeping safe. And uh, this has been lovely. Let's do it again. <laughs>